everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the Inspiration Lounge podcast. I am your host, Penny Fraser. I'm a photographer in South Florida, and I love to highlight inspiring people and their stories on this podcast. And we have a very special guest today, Anne Marchetti. Anne Marchetti is running for mayor of Lauderdale by the Sea, and I'm so happy you're here with us. Thank you. Please tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what inspired you to run for mayor of Lauderdale by the Sea. Sure. I'm a 16-year resident, I'm a neighbor, and I'm a friend. That's really what inspired me to run uh, for public office. I've been engaged in the community since I got here 16 years ago. And I think I've had a great deal of involvement in the community from the minute I moved here, I learned how to play tennis and I played tennis on the tennis courts. And then the folks that were on the tennis courts said, hey, will you come with us? We're talking to the town about making improvements. So I immediately got engaged and got on the Freed Family Park Improvement Committee and helped to renovate the playground and the tennis courts. I, I work in public health, and so a lot of the work that I do is all over the country, but I thought, why can't I bring some of those public health benefits to Lauderdale by the Sea? And so I was on a trip overseas, and there were farmer's markets everywhere. It really created a sense of community, and so I approached the town and said, hey, would you all be willing to entertain this as an idea? The town said, absolutely, we're not in the business of running a farmer's market, but if you bring us some resources that we could tap into... And I went and visited 56 farmers markets in South Florida and brought the vendors that we currently have today. Uh, And it's been running now for 11 years very successfully. I also brought a bee apiary. And then I began getting engaged with the business community through the Chamber of Commerce. I helped to renovate the Welcome Center that they manned through volunteers. And so those are the kinds of things that create a sense of community for me and engagement. So I've been here 16 years. I'm engaged. And my neighbor said to me, Why don't you get in there and be a positive voice for change? Because we need a fresh set of eyes and we need somebody who's going to question the kinds of things that have been going on for the last 14, 15 years. So that's why I'm running. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Please let us know what are some of the key issues you're passionate about addressing in Lauderdale by the Sea? And what specific plans or policies do you propose to tackle them? So we live, as Penny, in a beautiful beachside village. We are so fortunate to have unique low-rise culture, simplicity of our size, unique and vibrant businesses, uh, a beautiful beach, and, and neighbors that know each other. That's the kind of thing that I want to help maintain. We are at a crossroads in Lauderdale by the Sea between becoming a larger, more metropolitan city and maintaining our small beachside village status. And I think this is what this election is all about. So I am really interested in bringing the discussions back to residents, what's important to them, public safety being number one on both our beaches and in our communities. Secondly, having a strategic plan that tells us where we're gonna go because that conversation has not happened in over 10 years. So really having the community engaged in a discussion about whether we want to be a town or whether we want to be a bigger city, because a lot of the activities that are taking place, advertising on the cover of Southern Living, all of the big events that we have for people beyond our borders, our Christmas by the sea and our 4th of July, they're lovely, except it's changing the face of our community. And that's what we have to have a hard dialogue with our neighbors about. The other important issues for me are our environment, our beach, our dunes, sand dredging, and our neighborhood infrastructure, our sewers, our roadways, uh, our public safety, as I mentioned. So these are all really critical things. Are we in a very bad place right now? Absolutely not, but we're heading in that direction. And that's really why I'm running uh, to engage the community and to become more transparent about their tax dollars and where the spending is going. We recently had an increase in taxes. We are paying a lot of money for contractors and staff, and not a lot of money is going into the communities. Excellent. Thank you. How do you envision Lauderdale by the Sea evolving under your leadership? Again, it will be resident driven. So I am a representative of the community. It's not my opinion, although I get to carry one vote. It's really what are the neighbors and the residents saying as a whole, and how do we engage them more in the conversations? 
I know my preference and in the conversations that I've had with many of my neighbors as I've been walking door to door in the communities, and you would know, thank you for helping to support that and my priorities, that really what residents want is to maintain what we have. They really want to keep the small size, the specialness of this beachside village. Uh, our height limits are really critical. While that comes up for vote, not to the commission, but to the residents in 2026, it's going to be important that our residents understand that if we don't maintain our height limits, we're going to become like every other South Florida beach community with massive skyscrapers and lots of people in here where we're not going to have access to our beautiful beaches. So those are the important things that I think we need to ensure. And I am really running to maintain the simplicity and the character of the town we have now so that generations from now, people look back and say, wow, they really did take care of us. And we still have the same place that we can go to year after year. That's great. Thank you so much. As a female candidate, have you faced any unique challenges during your campaign? And how have you addressed them? I think as Ruth Bader Ginsburg has said, Women should be at every level of the decision-making powers and in every level of government. So I applaud that position. I've put myself forward, not as a female, but as a smart, competent, talented, hardworking individual that's going to listen to people and get things done. My nickname professionally is the get it done girl. I'm passionate about public services and our public service. And I'm, I have a deep rooted belief in the power of collaboration. And as a woman, I think that we have not had a woman on the dais for 10 years. And if I should be elected, it will be the first time in seven or second time in 75 year history of Lauderdale by the sea that a woman is serving. That's a very big deal as a mayor. And while I have not faced any unique challenges as a woman, uh, I think people underestimate the power that a woman can have on the civility of the dais, uh, on the decision-making and balance out that testosterone that's been up there for the last 10 years, uh, making these kinds of decisions. Um, as a female, uh, naturally, I think one of our characteristics is listening and caregiving and nurturing. Uh, and I plan to bring those skills and those uh, uh, assets to the dais because I want our neighbors to feel that they're cared for and nurtured and that they're paid attention to. That's great. Thank you so much. How do you plan to engage with residents and ensure their voices are heard in the decision making process? That's a great question. I question all the time why meetings are on the second and fourth Tuesday at 630 in the evening. Why we don't have more workshops where we're going out to the community and engaging residents in conversations why there aren't town hall meetings where we go out to the residents and meet with their different uh, homeowners associations or have neighborhood events where we bring neighbors together. Those are the kinds of things that I'd like to see happen. It shouldn't just happen around election time where people are going door to door and having conversations about what's important. It should happen all the time. So on a quarterly basis, um, as mayor, I will be going to the communities, having conversations with residents, having impromptu meetings, having opportunities where we have workshops before meetings on very difficult conversations. I was responsible for um, a lot of the work that was done to improve the downtown outdoor dining and walkability. And those meetings happened over the course of a couple of charrettes. But the information that was um, shared during those conversations was never passed on to the commission. So when they went to make decisions about the cost and the elements in the downtown redesign, a lot of those pieces were lost. So the commissioners have to be at those dialogues and they have to take that information into consideration. And I think there's some really creative ways, especially with technology, that we can be doing this kind of work. We learned how to do Zoom during the COVID. Why don't we continue to do some of this so we can engage residents right in their own homes? Yes, that's a great idea. Thank you for sharing. What is your vision for economic development in Lauderdale by the Sea? And how do you plan to support local businesses while ensuring sustainable growth? So as a business owner myself, I have a small consulting practice here in Lauderdale by the Sea in public health and education. 
uh, as a member of the Chamber of Commerce, as a former director of the board of the Chamber of Commerce, as a consultant to the Chamber of Commerce, and as an advocate for the businesses, I believe that people come to Lauderdale by the sea for our beaches and they stay for our businesses. So economic development within our businesses is very important to me. And we're not talking big outside businesses in Lauderdale by the sea. We're talking small mom and pop shops and entrepreneurs that are here organically. We want to support those businesses and try to help them get what they need. So a couple of quick things that I think are really important. We've done a lot to improve the downtown. We have not done enough in the Western Corridor to help promote the businesses that are down there. We should be running shuttles back and forth in town to make it easier for people to get from one part of town to the other. We are a town from the beach to the bridge of the intercoastal, but sometimes we forget that we are A1A and eastward. And so we've got to really help support, support those small local, small local businesses west of A1A. The other things that I think we can do is we've got um, code enforcement and we tend to write tickets for uh, things that are really not uh, public health related or safety related. And we've got to balance that out and improve the capacity for our businesses to provide signage and accessibility so that people know that they're there and they exist. So mm -hmm. again, technology is a great tool. We have websites that could advertise our businesses more. Our businesses have uh, an understanding of who their clientele and who their customers are. How can the town engage with businesses through some small mini grants that will allow the businesses to, to take advantage of those resources and thrive and, and flourish? The town had a program about 12 years ago where they gave a small mini grants to hoteliers and our boutique hoteliers to give them facelifts, to help them afford facelifts for their facades. Why not consider something like that? for some of our other businesses that help improve signage and visibility from the street and other resources. Thank you so much. How do you plan to address environmental concerns and promote sustainability initiatives within Lauderdale by the Sea? So I just spoke last night at a forum and I said to the community that was gathered, to me, public safety is the most important thing. And I think that Public safety includes our environmental concerns, our dunes, our ocean, our marine life. That's all part of our safety. And so we really need to be thinking not only about our resident safety in our communities, but also the safety of our beaches and the safety of our marine life. So there are programs that are currently in place in Lauderdale by the Sea. But again, it's like a hidden secret. Our residents aren't fully aware of it. They're not engaged in those conversations. Uh, and we need to bring these plans out to them so that they can have a conversation. Uh, we have terrific departments in Broward County. We have the Florida um, Environmental Protection Agency. I've worked with them on a number of issues related to our beaches uh, and public safety and also dunes, sand dredging, waste, mm -hmm. environmental issues. And so those are the kinds of organizations we need to tap into more regularly and engage with our residents. Yes. What message would you like to convey to residents of Lauderdale by the Sea as they consider you for their choice for mayor? And let me finish that last question too, and it folds into this one. It's a two-way street. An elected official can only be as effective as the constituents that they're involved in. And so while I pledge to be out in the community and talking to people and engaging people, I need the residents to engage with the elected officials. One of the programs that I'd like to bring to town is a training for residents that helps educate them. Oakland Park has it and another number of other uh, municipalities have this. And it's a training program for residents to really understand all of the departments, what they do, how they operate, how they're funded, and it really helps residents engage more formally in the town and in the operations of the town. It's not going to be for everyone, but they can then be voices in their local community and create hubs of information to disseminate this. I think this is an excellent way to engage those that have the time and the capacity in the community that can that trickle back to elected officials that maybe can't be out there talking to everybody all the time so that there's a formal process to provide feedback 
and to, to be able to vote in favor of the majority of the residents that are in this community. And the same thing with the businesses. So when I talk about our taxpayers, I talk about them in full. Excellent. Thank you. Lauderdale by the Sea has been in the news recently for an unfortunate event that occurred on the beach where a young girl lost her life when a sand hole collapsed. Um, could you please comment on this and our condolences to the Madding Ling family? It was a horrific and awful accident. And again, what I said earlier in this conversation and what I said last night is that our public safety is paramount. It is really unfortunate that a week after her death, the town called a meeting and has done absolutely nothing as a result of that, except instruct the town manager to bring back data and information about what this new commission after the election could make a decision for. We should have immediately improved our signage about digging on this in the sand, immediately send out public service information. We should immediately have increased our patrols on the beach. All of those changed when we transferred over to the uh, from the volunteer fire department to our Pompano fire department. Uh, and those all need to be increased immediately. And then we need to have a really difficult discussion with the community about lifeguards. Um, and I've been out knocking on doors since that incident happened uh, and talking to people about their preferences. And what I'm ascertaining is there's a mix of, of feelings and that perhaps we have a couple of designated beach areas that have lifeguards where families with children understand that there'll be an extra set of eyes available for safety and mm -hmm. that they can take their children there and there's more accessible parking, for example, at El Prado Park and at the uh, north of the, the pier. And then the rest of our beaches will maintain as they are, but improved patrolling, improved signage and improve it uh, with communication to our residents about the importance of public and beach safety. Excellent. How can our listeners get involved in your campaign or support your vision for the future of our city? I would welcome their support. They can call me on my cell phone, 508-468-5167. People say all the time, why is that not a, a Fort Lauderdale number? And I'll tell you right now, all the numbers were gone when I moved here. Uh, so I just kept my phone. They can go to my website. It's Marchetti, M-A-R-C-H-E-T-I, the number four, mayor, M-A-Y-O-R dot com. Uh, you can see all of the information about me, my history, the platform that I'm running on, where you can find me in the community from week to week, as well as solicit, give me your information. I'll give you a follow-up call or email and get on my mailing list. I send out a newsletter once a week and should I be elected, I will continue to do that for the residents. That's excellent. I wanted to also mention the Sun Sentinel has endorsed you as a candidate and for mayor. And I am so happy to be able to help you to spread the word through this podcast and also knocking on doors. And I loved our photo shoot. I just have to show this. I love Thank you so much. Photo. You did such a beautiful job. Not only has the Sun Sentinel endorsed me, but former mayor Scott Sasser has endorsed me, former vice mayor Elliot Dodd has endorsed me, former vice mayor Sokolo has endorsed me. So I have lots of support behind me and a lot of work to do out there, but with partnerships like yours and partnerships with other residents and friends in the community, we can really make a change in Lauderdale by the sea. That's really what this election comes down to. Do you wanna keep heading in the same direction that we're heading or would you rather stop, take a look, listen to residents and really create a plan that's gonna help us get to where we wanna be? Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here today. You have my vote and um, I'm so happy you were able to share some information with our audience here today. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Thanks for all you're doing. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget click and subscribe and leave a review. Remember the magic doesn't end here. Stay tuned and connect with us on social media where we continue the conversation. If you or someone you know has a story that deserves to be heard, reach out because every story matters. This is Inspiration Lounge Podcast signing off with a reminder that each day is an opportunity to create and capture 
something extraordinary. Take care, stay inspired, and see you in the next episode. Thank you.